What's going on? We need to talk. <laughs> you asked me what was missing from basketball. You woke me up to tell me that? It's not fun for me anymore because you're missing. Greetings, guests. Welcome to the patriarchy, where we explore cinema classics fueled by predictive Hollywood programming and unpack how our favorite characters in cinema got egg all over their faces. I am your commentator, Dom, and tonight we're unpacking the final struggle love scene from Love and Basketball. The entire film of Love and Basketball is marketed as this romantic sports drama, and it's really a great fictional movie about a female athlete pushing through hardships and setbacks to make her dream of playing in the WNBA come true. But there is this messy love story that is really the central focus of the movie. And I actually have full commentary on the entire film, but it is just so long because there is so much toxicity in Quincy, Monica, the parents, really everyone. So in this video, I've cut it down to analyze the most popular scene in the film. And that is one of the very last scenes where the main character, Monica, is trying to win her man back. The video may be a little bit choppy because this is really just like a rant, but I hope you enjoy nonetheless. And with that said, let's discuss. The movie was written by Gina Prince Blythewood and stars Sinai Lathan and Omar Epps. And as a brief recap, main characters Quincy and Monica grew up together. They briefly crushed on each other as kids, then dated just before going into college, then Quincy dumps her when they are in college because she's not centering him and she's focusing on her game. Life goes on, she plays basketball overseas, he gets engaged, and he ultimately does end up in the NBA. And she, as adults, wants him back. And so in this scene we are looking at today, we see that she does this very nostalgic thing where she walks over to his window and challenges him to a game of basketball. And in this scene, it's really important to note Quincy's facial expressions. What's going on? We need to talk. Please. This is an example of a woman chasing a man, clearly begging him in this scene. Obviously, if you have any kind of intuition, which men have intuition too, or are they just oblivious? Are they oblivious? I don't know, because I'm not a, I don't, I'm not a man. I don't know. But she's she's walked up to his window. She's got these little puppy dog eyes, and she's like, I need to talk to you, please. And he's like grunting and making this big to-do. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess it's in the middle of the night and he was asleep. And so she lets him know, I've loved you since I was 11, since when you pushed me on the ground after you lost playing basketball to me. <laughs> Struggle of. We haven't talked since college. You wait two weeks before my wedding to tell me something like that. And so then he starts scolding her. You haven't changed. You still think the sun rises and sets on your ass. Monica, why didn't, why didn't you walk away at this point? You, you should have walked away and stayed gone in college, but now you're sitting here as an adult at this man's window in the middle of the night, letting him know that you love him, and he responds with, You still think the sun rises and sets on your ass? That's when you turn around and you just say, um, okay, I'll just go in the house now. She is a fighter, okay? She, she's a basketball player. She is a fighter, but this is crazy. This is crazy, but this is a love story. Well, guess what? It doesn't. Because you don't pull this shit on someone who's about to get married. Better late than never. Right? Wrong. And he's right. He, he goes, you don't pull this shit on somebody who's about to get married. Uh, this is the one time in the film that Quincy is right because this is not fair to the other girl. This isn't fair to his fiance Kira that she's doing this. And I feel bad for her. I really do because if if you were about to get married, it's supposed to be like one of the most beautiful, exhilarating, joyous times in your life. You're planning a wedding, you're going through all this, and then some chick from back in the day comes up to your fiance and is like, don't marry her because I love, like this is very selfish. 
It's very selfish. It's very dumb because he obviously does not like you. But it's also very selfish because of what you're doing now to another woman. I've loved you since I was 11. And the shit won't go away. But yeah, this scene makes me not like Monica. Yeah, I, yeah. So Quincy, you know, he's an asshole. We can all agree on that. He's been like that his entire life. And, you know, he basically turns his back on her and starts to walk away. And Monica should have just let him walk away. But instead, she chases him. She chases him. So she does this thing where she's like, I'll play you one game one-on-one -on -one for your heart. I'll play you one game one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> for what? Your heart. So Quincy loves this. He he loves that Monica is fighting for him. He's really milking it out and making her beg for it. So they eventually do play basketball. And um, when they did this before, when they were in college, they played this little one-on-one -on -one game. It was a game where if one person scored a point, the other person had to take off their clothes. But he basically let her win because he wanted her to get naked back then. And Monica, recalling this memory, knows that if he wants something bad enough, then he'll let her win. So she's thinking that if he wants me and he doesn't want to marry Kira and he really wants to have a life with me, then he will let me win this. And so they're playing and he starts off rough because he's got an injured knee. But then because of his ego, and this is also really kind of mean too, he crushes her. He goes on to beat her just because he wants to see her defeated. The look on her face when she's starting to lose and he's just scoring point after point after point. He likes seeing this woman look defeated. Struggle love. And so while he's beating her, they're playing this sad music because she's about to lose. He does this intentionally. It's not like he just changed his mind at that last minute. And he has this kind of like smug look on his face. She's just like fighting for her life. She's fighting for his heart. And he's got this smug look on his face like, yeah, I'm going to show you. He's showing her I don't really care about your feelings because he's really playing a hard game. He's really making her work for it. And the song that is playing in the background is you make a fool of me. You make a fool of me. That's the song that's being played while they're playing this game. And it's it's true. Perfect score from the composer of this movie. This Quincy really has been making a fool of this girl her whole entire life. Oh, Monica, this is Karen. Karen, this is Monica. I'm just about to go get some food. Welcome. And she's still fighting for his love. Ladies, don't do this. In this scene where they're playing, he is being so hard on her and she is in distress. She is in distress because she really, really loves this man and she wants this man. And he knows this, but he is making her, like he is intentionally putting her through distress knowing in the end that he's going to say, all right, we can be together. You, prove, you proved yourself to me. <laughs> and so when he finally scores, she looks so defeated and she's like realizing, oh, I, I just lost you. You don't really love me. And he lets her sit in it. He's look smug once again. Tell me what this look is on his face. And, you know, she's defeated. He's like, all is fair in love and basketball, right? This, like, why do you want to be with this dude? He is going to make your life a living hell. Life is not easy with this man. It hasn't been. It's, like, proven, but... I don't know she likes him because she, she's known him for all his life. I don't know why she likes him, but okay. She's crying. She's got a little puppy dog eyes. She's got this little sad puppy dog look on her face. The song, you, you Make a Fool of Me, is still playing in the background. And so she turns her back and she starts walking away. She turns her back and starts walking away. And then he says, Double or nothing. Why would you play with somebody like that? Why does she like this? He just played with you. <sighs> She's like a little puppet. He knows how to manipulate her to get her all worked up, to get her all distressed, to get her all in her feelings, 
just to turn around and say double or nothing 